Good morning, Common Ground. How are you all doing? It's great to be in God's presence with you this morning. And um, let's see. Let me adjust your microphone here quick. All right, uh, let's pray as we um, listen to the Word of God. Heavenly Father, as we uh, open up our hearts and minds to your Word, I pray that you will open up your Word to us. I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. When I was a civilian pastor, my church has supported a missionary in uh, Uzbekistan and uh, some other places uh, in the Eastern Europe. And uh, missionary had a sabbatical year, and uh, she came to visit uh, my ministry. And uh, she came to visit, I gave us the uh, missionary report, and always glad to hear what missionary is doing, how God is working through a missionary. And uh, she brought a gift to the ministry, and I had never seen those kind of gifts before. It was my first time. And she brought Russian doll. How many of you seen the yeah, Russian doll before? Do you guys know what I'm talking about, right? I never seen it before. It was about like uh, 20 some years ago. Uh, so, you know, I thought it was a simple doll. And uh, she said, hey, Pastor Ben, why don't you uh, just open up the, you know, the doll? I did. Oh, my goodness. Lo and behold, there was another doll inside of it. It was a pleasant surprise. And she said, why don't you open another one? And I did. And there's another one. So I'm not sure you haven't received the gift. There's a gift inside of the gift. And that's what the Russian doll was. And this Christmas, as we celebrate Christmas, God has a Christmas gift for me and for you. Do you know what those Christmas gifts are? It's like this Russian doll. As we open up God's present, this box, as we open up the box as a gift, and inside the gift, there's another gift. And inside that gift, there's another gift, and on and on. And what is God's Christmas gift for me and for you? Let's look at the, uh, today's passage. Today's passage talks about God's Christmas gift to us. Especially, let's look at the uh, verse 11 and 12. Verse 11 says this, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. A Savior has been born for you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. So God's, uh, God's Christmas gift to uh, you and me is this baby. Baby born in Bethlehem about 2,000 years ago. And he is called Savior. And he is called Christ. And he is called the Lord. The Christ means the anointed one. The Messiah. And the Messiah that has been prophesied in the book of Old Testament. The Old Testament talks about one day God is going to send us the Messiah. The Messiah who will deliver us from our sins. The Messiah who will forgive our sins and he will grant us eternal life and salvation. Of course, at the time, the Jews, they were looking for a political Messiah, political leader who will overthrow the nation of Rome, who will overthrow uh, Rome, and he will exalt nation of Israel over the world, and he will restore the nation of Israel. And that's what type of the uh, uh, Messiah the Jews were looking for. But the Christ, the Messiah that we have, it's not political uh, leader. He's a savior. He is a Lord. The Lord, the title that has designated to Yahweh, God. And as we look at the uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, and seven, in Isaiah prophesies about this Messiah, this coming Messiah. He says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increasing of his government and peace, there will be no end. 
He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And John 3.16, the very famous passage we all know, says, For God so loved the world that he gave, that he gave his one and only Son to the world, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish and have eternal life. Who is this child? Who is this baby born 2,000 years ago in a manger? in Bethlehem, who is called the Christ, the Anointed One, who is called the Savior, who is called the Lord, who is called the Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And he will establish God's kingdom with justice and righteousness. What's the name of the baby? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Jesus. And Jesus is God's Christmas gift to you and me and to the world. I don't know how, I, I don't know how many children you have. I have three children, Christian, Hannah, and Josiah. I love them to death. I love them to death. If anybody asks me, Ben, can you give one of your child to sacrifice them, to forgive, to save the entire world? Would you be willing to do that? I don't know how many children do you have, but would you be willing to do that if anybody asks you, will you be able to sacrifice and send them to the cross and have them die and go through all kinds of sufferings beyond our imagination? Will you do that? If you ask that question, if I ask that question to you, what is your answer? You know what, to be honest with you, I can't. I can't. I love them to death. They are my life. They are my joy. They are my treasure. That's what I whisper to my son, Josiah, every, every night before he goes to bed. Josiah, I'm glad that you're my son. I'm so glad that you're my treasure. I love you so much. And why would I sacrifice him for the entire world to save the world? What those people in Africa, what those people in South America, what those people in Japan and China have to do with me? Nothing. I'm not going to do that. But God, as a father who has his one and only son, one and only, not three, one and only son, and he said what? He gave his one and only son to the world. And that is God's Christmas gift to you and me. Jesus Christ. He is one and only Son. Even God the Father knew that He had to go through all kinds of suffering. And He has to go to the cross and die. God the Father knew that. And yet, He gave the gift of Jesus Christ to you and me as his Christmas gift for us. That is God's first Christmas gift to you and me. What is God's gift, a Christmas gift to you and me? No, first of all, it's Jesus Christ himself, his one and only son, that God the Father willingly gave him to you and me. And just like the, uh, this Russian doll, as we open up the gift, there's another gift. And Jesus Christ brings more gifts to us. You know, just like when we as a soldier, when we're deployed for 12 months or 9 months, or when we're on TDY for 2 weeks or a month like that, you know, we're coming back home. And, and of course, our spouses, our children, would love to have our presence back, you know myself, just being there with my family would be a great gift to my kids and my spouse, right? But what do I do? I go shopping and I buy something for my children. I buy something for my spouse and I bring gifts for them. And just like that, 
Our Heavenly Father brings more gift within our Lord Jesus Christ. And the second gift that God has given to us through this Christmas is that it is the glory of God. What is God's Christmas gift to you and me? First of all, it's Jesus. Secondly, it's God's glory. Look at verse 9 in today's passage. Verse 9 says, An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. And verse 14, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Just looking at this passage, we hear the glory, the word of God glory. It may not mean much to you, but back then it meant a lot to those people. Let me explain why. When was the last time before Luke chapter 2 in today's passage when the angels and host of angels showed up and say, glory in the highest. When was the last time that we have seen the glory of God in the Bible? It was, it was right after the destruction of the temple. The temple was destroyed by pagans. And uh, the Ezekiel, Ezekiel says right after they destroyed the temple, that's the uh, uh, BC, uh, uh, 586 BC, before Christ. And the Ezekiel, the prophet, and right after they destroyed the temple, he said, Ichabod, the glory of God, the Shekinah glory of God has departed. And Ezekiel lamented. The glory of God departed because the temple had been destroyed by the pagans. And ever since then, ever since then, God never showed up. God's glory did not appear to his people anymore. Absolute silence, complete silence. You know, the choir just sang this song this morning beautifully. By the way, I'd like to say thank you to choir for wonderful praise. Let's give a big round of hands, by the way. Thank you. you know, one of the lyrics that really stuck to my heart was that all of a sudden, the God has broken the silence and he revealed the glory. That's what they're referring to in today's passage. For about 400 years, right after the destruction of the temple of God, glory of God departed, and no more glory of God shown up. God has not spoken his people anymore. No more writing down the Bible. No more vision. No more visitation of the angels to human beings. You know, no more wonders. No more miracles. No more visions, no more dreams, no more God talking to the people. God was absolutely silent for about 400 years. That's about four generations. God did not speak at all. Absolutely quiet. And all of a sudden, in Luke chapter 2, angel shows up and the day shines. God's glory around the shepherds. They shine the glory of God, not only to the shepherd, but also all over the world. And they sing glory in the highest. God was revealing himself again. God was revealing his glory through his son, Jesus Christ. This baby Jesus born in Bethlehem about 2,000 years ago. You know, it was glorious. It was amazing. It was marvelous. In Jesus, God reveals his justice. In Jesus Christ, God reveals his justice because he has to punish the sin that I have committed and that you have committed, the world has committed. And in Jesus Christ, God is revealing his wisdom. And can you imagine the infinite God, God who is bigger than our galaxy, our universe, the scientists did not even find the end of the universe yet. We do not know, we do not even know how vast this universe is. Can you imagine God created the universe and he's bigger than that. He's an infinite God. Can you imagine the infinite God 
becomes man. Just think about that. Let it just settle in your mind a little bit. Can you fathom it? It's beyond our imagination. This is what French philosopher Voltaire has put it. When you think about incarnation of infi uh, infinite God, you know, becoming a man. He said, I can't imagine, I can't imagine mosquito and elephant having a, you know, having a intercourse and having an offspring. But I cannot imagine infinite God becoming a man. Our Lord Jesus Christ is 100% God, and he's 100% man. God becomes man. That is God's wisdom beyond our imagination. We cannot fathom how can that be. And God reveals his wisdom in Jesus Christ. In Jesus, and God is also revealing his faithfulness. As I read some of the scripture in the Old Testament, God is fulfilling his promise by sending his one and only son, Jesus, into this world as our savior. He is fulfilling his promises. He's not like politicians that we experience. You know, politicians, they make all kinds of promises, right? Right before they become elected. Once they become elected, once they take the office, they don't follow through those promises. What happens? We get disappointed. We get frustrated. So we're hoping the next one will fulfill their promises, and with the same hope, we cast a vote, right? But you know what? Our Heavenly Father never, never disappoints us. He always fulfills His promise because He is faithful God. And He's revealing His faithfulness in Jesus Christ. In Jesus, God reveals His mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is not receiving what I deserve. You know, as a sinner, I need to, I deserve to die. You know, I'm separated from God. I deserve eternal condemnation. But because of Jesus, because of Jesus who went to the cross, he took, he took the punishment on my behalf. So I'm not receiving that punishment that I deserve. You know what? That is mercy. And God is revealing the mercy through a Jesus. And God is also revealing his grace in Jesus Christ. Grace is receiving something that I do not deserve. I do not deserve forgiveness of my sin. I do not deserve eternal life. I do not deserve reconciliation with my Father. I do not deserve those things because I was under condemnation because of my sin. But, Jesus, but God reveals his grace in Jesus Christ. And in Jesus, God reveals his love. God reveals his love. John 15, verse 13 says this, Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friend. Jesus was born to lay down his life for me and for you. And that is God's love. That is God's love. God's justice, God's wisdom, God's faithfulness, and his mercy and grace and love, all these God's attributes, were, uh, attributes are wrapped up in the baby Jesus. And God was revealing his glory to you and me. And that's why... That's why the angels are saying glory in the highest. John in, in his gospel says, the word, referring to Jesus, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And one day, Philip Ask Jesus, Jesus, show us the Father, and that will be enough. You know what Jesus says? 
Philip, what are you talking about? You've been with me these past several years. You've seen me what I have done. You've seen me what I've taught you. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Anyone who has seen Jesus, we have seen Father's glory. You know, people say, they show me the glory of God. Look at the Bible. That God is revealing himself through Jesus Christ. The Bible says Jesus is the exact representation of God, who God is. And Jesus is God himself. You know, that is the second gift that God gives to you and me in this Christmas. What is God's Christmas gift to you and me? First of all, it's Jesus himself. He is the one and only Son of God that he came as a God's Christmas gift to you and me. And secondly, God gives us his glory. God gives us his glory through his Son, Jesus Christ, as a Christmas gift as well. The third Christmas gift that God gives to us is his joy. Number one, Jesus himself, his one and only son. Number two, the glory of God, that God reveals himself through his son, Jesus Christ. Number three, he gives us a joy, which is the theme of today's Sunday, right? Look at the verse 9 and 10 one more time. It says this, An angel of the Lord appeared to them. Who are those people? The shepherds, you know, uh, keeping watch over the, the, the flock, the sheep. The angel appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel of the Lord, angel of the Lord said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. They will be for all the people. When the angel of God appeared to the shepherds, they were terrified. And the angel said, do not be afraid. It was directed to those shepherds in the field, but it also applies to us. When did fear come to be? We as a humanity, when do we first experience fear? It was after Adam and Eve willfully disobey God and committed sin against God. Before the fall, there was no fear. Adam and Eve, there was no shame. The Bible says they were naked and they didn't feel shame at all. And they were in perfect harmony with God. They were in perfect harmony with one another. They were in perfect harmony with nature, with the nature. And they had perfect peace and joy. There was no fear at all. But once they took their fruit and ate willfully, and they disobeyed God, the sin crept into our lives, and sin brought fear in our lives. And we began to alienate ourselves from the Lord. We began to alienate ourselves from each other, because we're fearing each other. I'm sure we have a lot of parents who raise your kids. I raised three kids. I'm still raising you know, the youngest one who is eight, you know, whatever he does something, he knows my dad is not going to like that if I do this, right? Maybe he's been munching on too many, uh, too, too many candies. I know that, hey, Josiah, stop. He knows that he stops it, right? When I turn around, what, what does he do? He runs to the jar, aggressively you more. What does he do? Does he run to me? No, he goes straight to his room, hide from me. Why? because he's fearful of me. That's what we do as a human being. What the Bible says, what the angel of the Lord says, it says, do not fear, do not be afraid. In today, how much fear are we living under? How much fear do, are we experiencing right now these days? I mean, I don't want to even talk about the virus. It just, it just, I'm just fed up with it, to be honest with you. you know. I know we have, a, I don't even know the statistics. I'm not going to even track it anymore. And people die, sadly. Millions and millions of people die all over the world because of this virus. And we have, a, you know, Omicron, who is, which is, they say it's stronger, you know. 
And uh, that's why we start wearing masks inside, regardless of your vaccine you know, status, right? And we start, what, you know, separating you, right, from one another. A lot of people live in fear of this virus. What if I die? Fear of death. How about fear of failure? How about if I don't make it to the next rank? What if I don't get the good OER? What if I don't get the top lock? You know, we live in that kind of fear. You know, fear of failure, fear of a virus, you know, fear of a retirement. Will I have enough money in my banking account when I retire? Will I have any plan, if, you know, when I retire from the army? You know, fear of broken relationship. You know, in America, the divorce rate is more than what, 50%. One out of two, you know, end up in divorce. There's a fear. There's a fear of a relationship, broken relationship. You know, people live in fear constantly. What are you afraid of right now? What are you afraid of right now? Listen to what the Word of God says. God says, the angel of the Lord says, do not fear. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Interestingly, you know how many times do not be afraid and fear not those phrases come out in the Bible? Guess, wild guess. How many times? 300, 370, very close, okay? 365 times. Do you think that's a coincidence? How many days of a year in a year? 365 days. It's not coincidence. Every single day, God is telling us, do not fear. Do not live in fear. Why? Savior is born. Savior, who's going to go to the cross, he's going to die for you. He's going to forgive all of your sin. He's going to reverse the curse of sin. And he's going to remove that penalty of sin from you. And he's going to bring joy back to our lives. That's why angel of the Lord saying that, do not fear Fear not. I will give you joy through Jesus Christ. The joy, we cannot find it in this world. It is only coming from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, God allows us to taste little temporary joy. The Bible doesn't really distinguish the joy that we have in the Lord and joy in this world. The Bible doesn't distinguish that. And I kind of wonder why. I believe it because God wants us to taste the joy it, that the world has to offer. For example, you know, when you go to a good restaurant, when you eat a good bulgogi, or kalbi, you know, or sushi, I don't know, some of what, ugh, sushi, I hate sushi, right? But I love sushi. You, when you taste that, it's very salmon. I love salmon. When you taste that, it's so good. When you eat, you know, with my wife, Diane, I'm not a very expressive person, but my wife is. Whenever she eats good food, you will know that she is eating great food. You know, she's like, oh, this is awesome. This is cool. Oh, my goodness. Mmm, yummy, yummy. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's a little joy that God is allowing us to experience in this world. But after the meal, we get hungry, we forget about it, Right? So joy based upon the world, joy based upon our like, circumstance. For example, you know, when you get promoted to uh, next rank, yay, so happy. You know, you're, you're getting pay raise and you're moving on to next rank. It's awesome. You know, there's a joy. God let us experience that. It's a joyful occasion. It's a, you take joy in it. But you know what? After a year, looking back, do you have the same excitement? Do you have the same joy that you experienced at the time? No, it's only temporary. It's fading away. God is reminding us that, you know what, Ben, if you base your joy upon your circumstance, the things of the world, the food or circumstances or money or pledge or whatever, it's not going to last. It's not going to satisfy you. Me, I can only satisfy you. I can only give you the joy, the joy that the world doesn't know, joy that the world cannot give. The joy only comes from the Lord. I only can give to you. And that is the uh, God's gift to us. I read a Christmas gift one time, and this is what it says. If our greatest need had been information, God would have sent an educator. 
if our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us scientists. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us economists. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was for forgiveness, so God sent us a savior. And because of the fact, we can rejoice in the Lord because God is not going to change his mind. You know, one day God says, what if God said, you know what, I'm going to change the way I'm going to save the world. You know, I'm not going to save Ben anymore. What if he does that? It's going to be very disappointing, right? But he will never do that. He is not going to change his mind. You know, this is everlasting truth. This is the everlasting principle of God. God will never change. So we can bank on this truth of God. And that's why we can have joy from our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. What is God's Christmas gift to you? Number one, his one only son, Jesus Christ. Number two, his glory. Number three, his joy. Lastly, his peace. God gave us his peace. Verse 14, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And now look around, look around us. Where is peace in this world? As we look at the human history, where is peace? Our human history is characterized by rivalry, conflicts, war, and terrorism. You know, our nation just ended 20 years of war on terrorism, 20 years. And the reason why we are here as a U.S. military, why are we here in Korean Peninsula, the south side of the 38th parallel, why are we here? Because there's a crazy man up in the north. We do not know what he's going to do. That's why we're here. There's a tension all the time. Whenever he, you know, whenever he launches, you know, ICBM, you know, we get so nervous and there's tension and we're so ready to go to war. Where is the peace? Where is the peace? People do not find peace in this world right now. That's why sometimes we wonder whether it is true to sing a Christmas carol that Christ rules the earth with peace, joy, justice, and righteousness. But let me tell you this, this is not completely realized, just like the concept of our salvation, already and and, and not yet. We do have salvation, and yet it is not fully realized. Same is true here. The joy, the peace that God gave to us, we experience it through our Lord Jesus Christ, but it's not fully realized yet. But when we go to heaven, the joy, the peace, Can you imagine that? The temporary joy that we experience multiply probably a million times. That million times of the joy and peace is going to be extend forever. Can you imagine what kind of joy and peace that we are going to experience in heaven? You know, Romans chapter 5, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't people have peace in their lives? Because they do not find peace with God first. They need to be reconciled with Jesus Christ. If their relationship is restored with, with the Lord, with Jesus Christ, then they'll experience peace in their heart and in their life. That is the uh, last Christmas gift that God is giving it to us. There's a gospel song that I'm going to sing for you. If you know that, you can sing with me. It captures what I'm trying to say to you today. The song goes like this. It's kind of old gospel song that I used to sing. Some of you may know, some of you may not know. It's okay. If you know it, sing along with me. And I'm going to change a few uh, lyrics as well, but let this song speak to your heart. It says this, My peace I give unto you. It's a peace that the world cannot give. 
It's a peace that the world can understand. Peace to know, oh, oh, peace to live. My peace I give unto you. We're going to replace peace with joy. My joy I give unto you. It's a joy that the world cannot give. It's a joy that the world cannot understand. Joy to know, oh, joy to live. My joy I give unto you. Would you like to experience the joy and peace in your life? this Christmas, regardless of your circumstances, regardless of what's going on around the world, would you like to experience the true joy and peace that only comes from our Lord Jesus Christ? I want you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this Christmas. Because only through Jesus Christ you may be able to experience joy and peace. And you may be able to see who God is and see his glory. Simply, you just reach out to God in faith. Yes, God, I need Jesus. I need him in my life. Then God promised that he will come to your life. He will come to your life. And he will become your Savior and your Lord and he will grant you his peace and joy. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who was born to be our savior, the Christ, the Lord, the wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, and everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And Father, we thank you for all the other blessings that Jesus brings to us, your glory, and your peace, and your joy. And Father, let Christ be born in our hearts this Christmas so that we may be able to know who you really are. We may see your glory, and we may experience your joy and peace in our lives. And I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.